Hi, this is Ramboy and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this video is the first on a series of lectures that I like to do for uh, vector analysis. This course, vector analysis, is uh, a fundamental prerequisite in the study of engineering electromagnetics, which in turn is a fundamental or a core subject in the study of electrical, electronics, and even in computer engineering. But before I discuss today's topic, which is uh, an introduction to vector analysis, I'd like to give you the importance of studying this course. Vector analysis is a powerful mathematical tool in expressing, analyzing, and understanding the concepts that involve vector quantities. And because of that, a thorough knowledge of vector analysis is required for a better comprehension and appreciation of the following courses. First and foremost is the electromagnetic theory. In undergraduate engineering courses for electrical and electronics engineering and even in computer engineering, there is a course called electromagnetics which deals with the study of electromagnetic theory from electrostatics up to electrodynamics. And vector analysis is a very important prerequisite because it is the language of electromagnetics. Most quantities that we will be dealing with in electromagnetics are vector quantities. Even the operations involved would uh, require the knowledge of uh, vector quantities. Vector analysis also finds a lot of applications in the study of fluids, particularly in fluid dynamics. Whether the fluid is liquid or gas, mathematical modeling of fluids would involve a lot of vector quantities. When I participated in a training course in reactor engineering, I encountered a lot of uh, vector analysis applications, specifically when it comes to the study of reactor design. And these three are just some of the important uh, areas wherein vector analysis finds a lot of applications. Now, let's start our study of vectors by comparing vector quantities with scalar quantities. So, let us define what a scalar quantity and a vector quantity is. First, a scalar is a quantity that is specified only by its magnitude. So, ano ang halimbawa ng mga scalar quantities? Okay, so here are some examples. So in our uh, study of electromagnetics, we will be dealing with these quantities including electric charge, electric potential, which is related to voltage, by the way. Aside from that, temperature is also a scalar quantity, pressure, volume, mass, speed, work, energy, power, time interval, even electric current is a scalar quantity. And scalar quantities, remember, have only magnitudes. However, they can also be positive or negative. For example, electric charges. Electric charges could be positive or negative. When we study thermodynamics, we will encounter that sometimes work is positive and sometimes work is negative. So these quantities are called signed scalars because they can be positive or negative. And these scalar quantities obey the rules of arithmetic. So when we add scalar quantities, it's like adding numbers like uh, 2 plus 3 equals 5 or 4 minus 3 equals 1. So the rules of arithmetic applies to scalar quantities. However, vector quantities are different. Why? Because they do not obey the rules of arithmetic. A vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Unlike scalar quantities, a vector quantity is characterized by both magnitude and direction. Kapag scalar, magnitude lang yung meron siya. Pero kapag vector, may magnitude na siya, meron pa siyang direction. And this direction is the reason why vectors do not obey 
the rules of arithmetic that we are familiar with. Ang vector analysis, gumagamit siya ng sarili niyang arithmetic na ang tawag natin ay vector algebra. At yung vector algebra na yan, sisimulan ko yung discussion sa episode na ito. So what are examples of vector quantities? Displacement, velocity, weight, force, and acceleration. These are familiar quantities that we have encountered already in our study of mechanics in physics. Now, in addition to displacement, velocity, weight, force, acceleration, we also have momentum, which is a product of mass and velocity. Aside from momentum, here are other familiar vector quantities which are uh, commonly encountered this time in the study of electromagnetics. We have the electric and the magnetic field intensity, the electric and the magnetic flux density, and the current density. So these are the most common vector quantities that you will encounter in your study of electromagnetics. Of course, that's if you're able to pass this course in vector analysis, diba? Right? <laughs> okay, so in the next slide, let us see how vectors are represented. Vector quantities are usually represented by letters with an arrow on top. Ayan, no, kagaya nito. So here, letter A represents a certain vector A. And vectors are usually denoted by a letter having an arrow on top of it. Okay, so this is a vector A. Now, another example is this. This is vector B. But in electromagnetics, this vector whose symbol is B is uh, the magnetic field or more formally, the magnetic flux density. In electromagnetics, B is the magnetic field. Another example is E. So this E is a vector quantity. We know that it's vector because of the arrow sign there. And in electromagnetics, the vector quantity E represents a quantity called the electric field. So now, you are familiar with these two quantities, the magnetic field B and the electric field E. There are times that the vector quantities do not have arrows on top of them. Instead, they are just printed in bold. So, for example, we have the letter J, which is printed in bold. We also have this uh, quantity V and this quantity A. So, lahat ng mga yan, since bold ang kanilang pagkakaprint or pagkakasulat sa libro or sa PowerPoint, they are vector quantities. Now, uh, ito bang mga vector quantity na ito ay minire-represent na actual quantities? Yes. J here, is the current density. Let's write it down. J represents current density. How about this V? V is a vector quantity that usually denotes velocity. And here, A is a vector quantity that usually denotes the acceleration. Now, what if you know that a quantity is vector? However, in uh, books or in a PowerPoint presentation, they are printed just like this. Ayan, no, hindi siya nakabold. You know that J is current density and you know that it's a vector quantity. But here, J is uh, not in bold. So that means that this quantity, although they are vector, if they are printed in regular font, that means that they only indicate the absolute value of the vector. So, halimbawa, yung J na hindi nakabold, ang ibig sabihin niya, yan ay ang absolute value ng current density. Now, how about scalar quantities? How do we write them? We write them in the usual way. Hindi sila nakabold. For example, Q, I, and the Greek letter Psi. Sir, do these letters represent real quantities? Yes, in the study of electromagnetism, Q represents the charge, I represents the electric current, and the Greek letter Psi represents the electric flux, and all of them are scalar quantities. Now, aside from uh, this representation, we can also represent vectors pictorially. A vector in two dimensions can be represented as a directed line segment. Here, we have the green arrow, which is a directed line segment. Okay, so the absolute value of the vector is represented by R, and that absolute value is proportional to the length of the directed line segment. So if here, we have a long 
directed line segment or we have a longer arrow, that means that the absolute value of the vector is high. If you have a short arrow there, then that means that the absolute value of the vector is uh, small. So again, this R represents the absolute value of the vector. Now, how about its direction? Its direction is usually indicated by a certain angle. Let's call it the angle theta. So this theta is the uh, uh, angle that represents the direction of a vector. So once again, if you have a two-dimensional vector quantity, you can represent it pictorially using an arrow or a directed line segment. Aside from this, we can also represent vector quantities in terms of various coordinate systems. A vector quantity in a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system is represented in this manner. So here we have the vector A and we represent vector A in a three-dimensional coordinate system which is the rectangular or the Cartesian coordinate system and it is written in this manner. So here we have capital letter AX, AX plus capital letter AY and then small letter AY plus capital letter AZ and then small letter AZ. So how do we call these capital letters AX, AY and AZ? Those capital letters are called the vector vector components. So these are the vector components of this vector A. How about the small letters which are printed in bold? So if they are printed in bold and they have arrow on top, that means they are vector quantities, right? Yes. So this AX, AY, and AZ are called the unit vectors. Sir, ano bang ibig sabihin ng unit vectors? A unit vector is simply a vector having a magnitude of unity. Ang ibig sabihin ng unity, ang magnitude nun ay 1, as in 1. Okay? Kaya nga unity, kasi po 1. And they are used to specify direction. So that means here, the unit vector AX specifies a direction along the x-axis. AY specifies a direction along Y-axis and likewise AZ specifies the direction along the Z-axis. Now in some other references, ang ginagamit nila na unit vectors ay I, J, K. Sometimes gumagamit pa yan ng hat notation. Ano? Ganito ba? For example, A hat is a unit vector A. Ayan. Halimbawa, AX, ganyan. Or minsan, yung ibang uh, references ang ginagamit is I or J, pero may hat. So that means unit vector yan. Another example is AZ. Halimbawa, ayan, nilalagyan nila ng hat to indicate that it is a vector quantity. So AX and AZ are unit vectors which are identical with AX and AY here. So dito arrow ang ginagamit, dito naman hat ang ginagamit. Okay? So, dapat familiar tayo para pag nakita ka ng mga ganyang symbols, hindi ka nalilito or alam mo kung ano ang meaning nila. Now, let's move on to the next slide kung saan pag-aaralan natin kung paano kumuha ng magnitude at ng direction ng mga vector quantities. Given a vector A, which is expressed in a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate or the rectangular coordinate system, Paano natin kukuhanin ang kanyang absolute value? Simple lang, to get its absolute value, you get the square root of the sum of the squares of the respective vector components. I repeat, to get the absolute value of a vector, you just get the square root of the sum of the squares of the vector components. So, here are the vector components. I-square mo lang sila, one by one. Pag na-square mo sila, i-add mo sila, and then finally, you get the square root. Ano? So, that's the square root of the sum of the squares. Parang medyo mahaba yun, ah, no? So, <laughs> para mas madaling sabihin, minsan sinasabi na lang na square root of the quadratic sum. No? Square root of the quadratic sum Square root of the quadratic Kasi in-square mo sila And then in-add kaya sabi natin Square root of the quadratic sum 
Okay? So, that's it. Ganyan lang kadali kumuha ng absolute value ng isang vector quantity. Now, how about its direction? Paano natin malalaman ang direction ng isang vector? Again, that is a, with the use of a unit vector. And how do we get the unit vector that is in the direction of vector A? Okay? So, to get the unit vector, you just divide the given vector A. Ito yon, I-divide mo lang siya nung kanyang absolute value. Simple lang. Ulitin ko ha. Para makuha ang unit vector, i-divide mo lang ang vector na given ng kanyang absolute value. And since this is a unit vector, kapag kinuha natin yung kanyang absolute value, dapat ang makukuha natin ay 1 or unity. Ayan. So, pag kumukuha ka pala ng unit vector, pwede mong itest kung tama o mali yung sagot mo. Ano? Paano mo test? Get the absolute value of the unit vector. Kapag ang sagot na nakuha mo ay 1, most likely ikaw ay tama. Kapag ang nakuha mong absolute value ng kinumpute mong unit vector ay hindi equal sa 1, siguradong ikaw ay mali. So, kung uh, three-dimensional yung vector, ay eh, di makakaroon ka rin ng tatlong components doon. Yung component along x, component along y, at saka component along z. So, that means three times kang magdi-divide. Ano? Ito, i-divide mo ng absolute value niya. Ito, yung a, y, or y component, i-divide mo ng absolute value ng vector. Tapos ito naman, no? yung a, z, or uh, the component along z, i-divide mo ulit ng absolute value ng buong vector na yan. So, makakaroon ka dito ng tatlong terms. So, ayan, madali lang kumuha ng unit vector. Again, you just divide the vector by its absolute value. So, to illustrate this, let us solve an example problem. Find... The absolute value of the vector a, which is 2ax minus 4ay plus 5ac. And then express its direction as a unit vector. So here, meron tayong vector a. Three-dimensional siya kasi nga meron tayong tatlong components. x, y, at saka z. Ang sabi dyan, ano daw ang kanyang absolute value? Madali lang yan. Paano nga kumuha ng absolute value ng isang vector? The absolute value of vector A. Iba sabi natin, ang absolute value ng isang vector ay equal sa square root ng sum ng squares ng kanyang vector components or square root ng quadratic sum. So here, we have 2. Ito yon i-square mo. Plus, yung sunod, negative 4 squared plus 5 squared. So let us now evaluate this. 2 squared is 4 plus negative 4 squared is 16 plus 5 squared is 25. Ayan, napahaba yung square root ko. Ano? <laughs> so, pag inad natin ito, ang makukuha natin sagot is 4 plus 16 is 20 plus 25. We will get square root of 45. O, ba? So, this is now the absolute value of the vector. So, this can be simplified as 3 square root of 5 or you can express its value using decimal 3 square root of 5 is approximately 6.71 rounded to 2 decimal places now the next thing to do is to express its direction as a unit vector paano nga kumuha ng unit vector so the symbol for unit vector is a uh, a and then yung vector na kinukuna ng unit vector, which is vector A. Ayan. So, lagyan natin ng arrow to indicate that it is a vector. So, to get the value of the unit vector, which indicates the direction of this vector A, we will divide the given vector, copy-paste ko lang yung vector, to ax minus 4ay plus 5az. At i-divide ko silang lahat ng absolute value niya which is 3 square root of 5. Ayan. So, kapag dinivide ko yan isa-isa gamit ang isang calculator, may makukuha akong sagot. And that is equal to 0 0.298 minus 0 0.596 ay plus 0 0.7 4, 5, A, Z. 
So now, this is the unit vector that specifies the direction of vector A. So pwede natin i-check kung iyan ay tama by getting the absolute value of this vector. So kapag gumamit tayo ng calc u at kinumpute natin 0.298 squared plus negative 0.596 squared plus 0.0. 745 squared. Dapat ang makukuha natin sagot ay 1. Ayan. So, ang nakuha kong sagot sa aking calcio ay 0.9995. Okay? Which is approximately equal to 1. So, okay lang na hindi siya exacto kasi nga po dito sa mga ito, yung sagot natin na ground off din tayo dyan. Ano? Up to 3 decimal places. Basta ang makukuha mo dapat sagot, if not exactly 1, should be very very close to 1. Okay? So, that's it. Ganun lang kadaling kumuha ng absolute value ng vector and then its uh, corresponding unit vector that indicates its direction. Now, let's talk about some vector properties. So, when do we say that uh, two vectors are equal? Two vectors are said to be equal if and only if they have the same magnitude and direction. Ayan. Dapat daw yung magnitude at yung direction ay parehas. Halimbawa, meron tayo ditong dalawang vectors. Ayan. So, magkasinghaba yung dalawang vectors, which means that they have the same magnitude. And aside from that, they are pointing towards the right. So, same din ang kanilang direction. Another example, ayan. Meron tayong vector dito. So, kung ating mapapansin, magkasinghaba pa rin yung dalawa. Meaning, they have the same magnitude and they point towards the same direction. So, these two vectors are equal. Likewise, these two vectors are also equal. Now, how about the negative of a vector? So, the negative of a vector is also a vector having the same magnitude but this time in the opposite direction. So, halimbawa, you have here the vector represented by the blue arrow. It's pointing to the right. And here, we have the violet arrow, which represents another vector. And notice that they have the same length, meaning they have the same magnitude. But obviously, they point towards the opposite direction. Kaya sinasabi natin na itong vector na ito ay negative ng vector na ito. Okay? So again, this vector is just the negative of this and vice versa. This vector is also the negative of this vector. So some more examples. Here, we have the vector pointing towards this direction and we have this vector pointed in the opposite direction. And they have the same length. That means that these vectors are negatives of each other. Next. Pag-aralan naman natin kung paano mag-add ng vector. Ayan, vector algebra na tayo. And our study of vector algebra will begin with vector addition. So, para babalik tayo dito sa grade 1. <laughs> Pang grade 1 ito ng vector. Ano? Paano ba mag-add ng mga vector quantities? So, recall that vector quantities do not obey the familiar rules of arithmetic. So, we cannot simply add vector quantities in the same way that we are adding numbers in arithmetic. That won't simply work. So, we need to use and apply vector addition whenever we add vector quantities. Now, consider two vectors, A and B. Ayan. So, kung napansin nyo yung notation ko, hindi na ako gumamit dito ng arrow. Instead, I just uh, printed or typed these quantities in bold which indicates that they are vector quantities. Now, meron tayong dalawang vectors A and B. We have vector A in 3D and vector B in 3D. Both are expressed in Cartesian coordinates. So, how do we add these two vectors? Simple lang. Ano? If you add these two vectors, you'll get a vector sum, which is called the resultant. So, here, the word resultant means vector sum. So, the resultant vector represents the sum of two or more vectors. Sir, kahit tatlo, yes. Kaya nga two or more. Eh. So, pwedeng apat, lima, anim, isang daan, or isang libong vectors pa yan. Basta pag in mo sila, ang sum, ang tawag ay resultant. And the resultant vector is a single vector whose effect is the same as all the other constituent vectors are combined. For example, pinagsama-sama mo yung sampung vectors. So, that means yung resultant, isang vector lang. Pero ang katumbas ay yung sampung vector na inad mo. So, ang effect ng resultant, 
Kahit mag-isa lang siya, ay parehas lang kumpara dun sa sampung vectors na iyong inad. Kaya nga ang sabi natin, it's just a single vector whose effect is the same as all the other vectors are combined. Now, paano kinocompute ang resultant ng dalawang vector kung sila ay naka-express in three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates like this? Simple lang. You just add their respective components. So, ang i-add natin is x component to x component. So, ax plus bx. Tapos, lalagyan lang natin ang multiplier na ax. And then, for the y component, we add ay and by. Lalagyan mo lang ng unit vector along y. And then, for the last component, which is along z, you add the z components az and bz. Itong bz, maraming ginagawa yan because it's Busy. <laughs> so, pag na-add mo yung dalawang Z components, lagyan mo lang ng unit vector along Z, makukuha mo na ngayon yung expression para sa sum ng dalawa. For example, halimbawa, gawin mo siyang vector C if you want. Okay? So, di ba madali lang? Again, when we add vectors, we add the corresponding vector components. Now, paano yun ginagawa graphically? For example, meron ka ditong vector A and then meron ka ditong vector B. Ayan. So, gusto nating i-add ang dalawang vectors na ito. Paano yan ginagawa graphically? So, we can use what's called the triangle rule or the head-to-tail rule. Okay? So, yung tail nitong arrow na ito, ilalagay natin sa head ng isang vector kagaya nito. Ayan. So, dapat po yung arrow ng isang vector ay connected sa tail ng isa pang vector. Ayan. So, head-to-tail method ang tawag dyan. Okay? Ngayon, nasa na ang resultant? Ang resultant ay nasa tail ng unang vector and then directed towards the tip of the last vector. So, since dalawa lang naman sila, dito makakaform tayo ng triangle. Ayan. So, this is the vector sum A plus B, which is the resultant of the two vectors A and B. Okay? Sir, pwede po ba na halimbawa itong vector A, yun ang unahin ko, tapos yung vector B, dun ko isunod? Yes. Paano mo gagawin yun? Halimbawa, itong vector na ito, ilagay natin sa tip ng vector A. Ayan. Tapos, lagyan natin ngayon ng arrow from here to there. Palitan natin yung color. Gawin natin green. Ayan. So, itong green arrow na ito ngayon ang nagre-represent doon sa resultant ng dalawang vectors, which is kagaya rin nung kanina. Ayan, no? Ayan. Parang ito rin lang din siya. ba diba? <laughs> So, kahit alin yung mauna sa dalawa, okay lang. Parehas ta, tama yun. Basta, dapat yung arrow nung una connected sa tail nung pangalawa. Okay? Sir, pwede po na more than two vectors? Yes. Basta sunod-sunod lang sila. So, head to tail. Head to tail. Tapos yung resultant ay laging mula dun sa tail nung una hanggang dun sa arrow or tip nung last vector. The commutative and the associative laws of addition are applicable to vectors. Ayan. So, sa mathematics or sa arithmetic, meron tayong tinatawag na commutative law at saka associative law. So, these laws apply to vectors as well. Ano bang itsura ng commutative law? So, kung meron kang dalawang vectors, A at saka B, yung A plus B, parehas lang din sa B plus A. Ayan. So, they commute, sinasabi natin. So, ito ang tinatawag natin na commutative law. Sulat natin, commutative law. Next, how about the associative law? If you have three vectors, we can uh, demonstrate the associative law. So, if you have here vectors A, B, and C. Okay. So, dito, inad natin yung B and C. Saka natin inad yung vector A. Ah, unang iaad yung B at C. Saka mo iaad ang vector A. Equal din yan kung uunahin mo yung A at B na iaad. Saka mo iaad yung vector C. So, ang tawag dyan ay associative law. So, take note that the commutative law and the associative law applies to vectors. Now, how about if we want to get the difference of two vectors? Okay, so dito, gagamit tayo ng negative ng vector. Halimbawa, gusto mong computein yung A 
minus b. Okay. So, parang vector addition din to Kaso nga lamang, ang vector A, i-add mo sa negative ng vector B. Okay? So, that is how you do subtraction of vectors. So, vector A minus B is equal to vector A plus the negative of vector B. O, di ba? Paano nga kumuha ng negative ng isang vector? So, imumultiply mo lang lahat ng vector components ng negative 1. Or graphically, yung kanyang direction magiging opposite lang. So remember that the negative of a vector is that same vector with the same magnitude but points in the opposite direction. So i-illustrate natin yan. Halimbawa, ito yung vector A at ito yung vector B. Di ba? Sabi natin kanina, para makuha natin yung vector A plus B, dapat gagawa tayo dito ng itong vector na to Ililipat ko doon, tapos gagawa ako ng... Isa pang vector na magre-represent naman sa resultant. Ayan. So, ito ngayon yung A plus B. Kagaya nung ginawa natin kanina. But what if ang gusto kong gawin is A minus B? Ang sabi, dapat daw yung vector A ay i-add mo sa negative ng vector B. So, if this is my vector B, its negative should be pointing towards this side. Because dapat opposite yung direction kasi nag-negative siya. Pero same yung length. So, ito na siya ngayon. This is your vector negative B. So, ngayon, i-add na natin sila. Paano natin sila i-add? Pwede yung ginagawa ko kanina, itong vector A, lalagay ko lang yung vector B dun sa kanyang tip. Pwede ganito. Tapos, gagawa ako kayo ng isa pang vector na magre-represent sa resultant. Ayan. So, ito ngayon yung resultant. So, ito ngayon yung A minus B. Or, we can use the parallelogram law. Yung parallelogram law naman, gagawa ka lang ng parallelogram gamit yung dalawang vectors. So, the two vectors would serve as the sides of the parallelogram. And now, you will make, ayan, kagaya pa rin ng renewing ko. No? This uh, directed line segment would represent your resultant. So, in this case, the resultant is A minus B. Resultant pa rin ang tawag kahit na naka-minus ito. Okay. So, again, yung resultant ay hindi lamang kapag nag-add ka ng dalawang vectors, kahit na i-minus mo sila, basta pinag-combine mo yung mga vectors, addition man yan or subtraction, ang tawag ay resultant pa rin. Okay? Ah, sige. Bago natin practicein kung paano mag ng mga vectors, alamin muna natin kung ano mangyayari kapag ang isang vector ay minultiply ng isang scalar. What would happen if I multiply a vector with a scalar? Okay, so for example here, I have this directed line segment that represents, for example, vector A, and I multiply it by a certain scalar k. So you will get another vector quantity, say for example b, and this vector would have its absolute value equal to k times the absolute value of A. Ayan. So, yung absolute value nung makukuha nating product is equal to K times the absolute value of A. Ayan. So, K times A. Yung K, yun yung scalar, at yung A, yung absolute value ng vector. Ayan. So, ano ay yung direction ng vector na ito? Because it's a vector quantity, it would be in the same direction as vector A. And what is the direction of vector A? So, that is a unit vector along vector A. That is why gumamit tayo ng notation na ito. So, the unit vector along vector A. So, again, if I multiply a vector by a scalar, I will get another vector quantity whose magnitude is equal to the product of the two and is in the same direction as the given vector. Ayan. ba? Diba? Simple lang. Now, the distributive property applies the distributive property of multiplication over addition. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan is ganito. Kapag meron daw akong k, which is a scalar, tapos i-multiply ko siya dito sa sum ng vectors a and b, so, pwede kong i-distribute yan. No? So, k times the quantity a plus b is equal to ka plus kb. So, the distributive property applies if you multiply the sum of two vectors by a scalar, just like this. Okay, so next slide. This time, let's talk about the position and the displacement vector. Ano ba itong position vector at saka displacement vector na ito? Simple lang yan. 
Yung position vector, yun yung directed distance mula sa origin papunta sa isang point. Halimbawa, kung meron kang isang point in three-dimensional Cartesian, yung kanyang position vector pwede nating i-represent as R sub P. Yung P yun yung point. So, yun yung x-coordinate, y-coordinate, at z-coordinate ng point. Lalagyan lahat ng unit vectors ax, ay, and az. Yun lang. So, madali lang yan. Kung ano yung given coordinate ng point, bawat isa, x, y, z na value, lalagyan mo lang ng ax, ay, and az. Yun na yung kanyang position vector. Ano naman yung displacement vector? The distance vector, or sometimes called the displacement vector, is the displacement between two points in space. So, makakaroon ka lang ng distance vector kapag ka may dalawa ka ng points. For example, points A and B. So, if I have two points, A and B, ano daw yung displacement vector RAB? Ayan. So, kung ang kinukuha natin na displacement vector ay RAB, dapat ang gagawin mo is coordinate ng B minus coordinate ng A. Kasi nga po, yan ay displacement. Di ba pag displacement, final minus initial? So, para bagang dito, yung initial is yung A, yung B naman is yung final. Okay po? So, that is uh, the coordinate of B minus coordinate of A for all the components X, Y, and Z. So, paano yan? O, halimbawa, meron tayo ditong uh, reference point, ito yung origin. Tapos dito, meron tayong isang point, ito yung A. Tapos dito, meron tayong isa pang point, point B. So, aling ngayon yung vector na nagre-represent sa RAB? E di dapat mula sa A papunta sa B. For example, ito yon Mula sa A papunta sa B. So, pictorially, this is how you represent the distance vector. And again, in obtaining the distance vector, you subtract always the second minus the first. Una minus pangalawa. So kung yan ay R, X, Y, that should be the component of Y minus X. Halimbawa. Or kung yan ay R, P, Q, dapat yan ay component ng Q muna minus yung component ng P. Okay? So, madali lang. This time, let us solve some examples. The points P and Q are located at negative 1, 4, 0 and 2, negative 3, 5. So, that means ito yung point P ko at ito yung point Q. Ano daw ang position vector sa P at sa Q? Madali lang yan. Ano? To get the position vector, ano nga ginagamit natin na pang-indicate ng position vector? R. And then, kung anong point? P. So, RP equals, ano ba yung coordinate niya? Lalagyan mo lang yun ang unit vectors isa-isa. So, kung negative 1, that's negative 1 times AX is negative AX. And then, ang Y component niya ay 4. So, dapat plus 4AY. Tapos, wala siyang Z component. So, ito na yun. ba? And then, we have RQ. So, the position vector of point Q is 2. AX, tapos negative 3 ang Y component, so minus 3AY, and then 5, so plus 5AZ. So that's it. Ito na yung dalawa nating position vector sa P at sa Q. Sa letter B naman, ano daw ang distance from P to Q? Or distance vector? So since this is vector, kailangan natin kunin yung RPQ. Remember, to... Uh, Denote the distance vector, we use R, and then two subscripts, P, Q. Ang sabi niya kasi is from P to Q. So, dapat mauna yung P, pangalawa yung Q. And since we are getting the distance vector, P, Q, dapat yan ay Q minus P. Ano? So, ito yung Q, ito yung P. 2 minus negative 1 is positive 3. So, we have 3AX, and then negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. And then 5 minus 0 is 5AZ. So, this is now the distance vector from P to Q. Now, sa letter C, ano naman daw ang distance between P and Q? So, to get that distance, we, we just get the absolute value of this vector, RPQ. Yan. So, to get the absolute value, remember, you have to get the square root of the square 
the sum of the squares. So here, if I square 3, that will be 9 plus negative 7 squared, that's 49 plus 5 squared is 25. Ayan. So pag in natin yan, makakakuha tayo ng square root of 83. So this is now the absolute value of the vector RPQ which also represents the distance between P and Q. Paano ba natin yan i-represent -re pictorially? Halimbawa, ito yung reference natin. Ito yung uh, origin. Tapos, ito yung isang point. At ito naman yung isa pang point. ba? So, ito yung P halimbawa. Ito yung Q halimbawa. Ayan. So, this is your RP. And this one is your RQ. So, kung PQ yung hinahanap, dapat mula sa P papunta sa Q. So, this is your R, PQ. Ayan. At yung distance nung dalawa, P at Q, ay absolute value lang ng vector na ito. So, ito na siya. ba Parang distance formula lang din yan. Next, sa letter D naman, hanap daw tayo ng vector na parallel sa PQ at ang magnitude ay 10. For example, let that vector be vector A. Ano? So, ang kanya daw magnitude ay 10. No? So, ito yung magnitude niya. Now, para maging vector yan, kinakailangan magkaroon siya ng direction. And remember, what indicates the direction of a vector? Ano ba ang nag indicate sa direction ng isang vector? Yes, that's correct. Yun ay ang kanyang unit vector. O, gawin nating a sub hat, uh, a hat yan. Okay? Now, ano nga yun yung unit vector na gagamitin natin pang multiply sa 10 para makuha yung vector A? Ang sabi, yun daw vector ay parallel sa PQ. So, kung parallel siya sa PQ, dapat yung direction nila parehas. Because remember, if two vectors are parallel, their directions must be the same. Okay? So, the direction of this vector, which is this unit vector A, should be the same as the direction of vector RPQ. And to get that, a sub RPQ is equal to the vector RPQ divided by its absolute value. Ayan. So, itong RPQ na ito, ito yun, 3AX minus 7AY plus 5AZ. Tapos, i-divide lang natin siya ng absolute value niya. ba? Square root of 83 yun. Ayan. Okay. So, ngayon, kapag kinumpute natin yung value ng unit vector A, RPQ, ang makukuha natin sagot ay 0 0.329 AX. Paano ko ginawa yun? That's 3 divided by square root of 83 sa calculator minus 0 0.768 AY plus 0 0.549 AY. Z. Ayan. So, ito na ngayon yung unit vector. Kung gusto mong i-check, kunin mo yung absolute value niyan. Dapat ang makuha mo sagot, if not equal to 1, very very close to 1. So, ang gagawin na lang natin para makuha yung vector A is to multiply this unit vector kasi ito na yung direction eh. So, ito na ngayon yung direction ng RPQ. Na since yung vector A ay parallel sa RPQ, dapat yung direction ng vector A kagaya ng direction ng RPQ. Okay? So ito, ang A hat na ito, imumultiply mo na lang ng 10. So multiply natin to ng 10, isa-isa, may makukuha tayong 3.29ax minus 7.68 ay plus 5.49 az. Ayan, madali lang namang i-multiply. Pag multiply mo yan ng 10, i-move mo lang yung decimal point. ba? So, madali lang. Another example, given the vectors a equals 4ax minus 2ay plus 5az and b equals x squared yax plus xzay plus yz squared az. Okay, so kung napansin nyo, yung vector A natin constant. Samantalang yung vector B natin, hindi siya constant. Kasi nga, nagbabago-bago yung kanyang value depende sa values ng X, Y, and Z. So that means that vector B is uh, non-uniform. It's a non-uniform vector because it 
its value depends on the uh, position na pinag-uusapan. Nakadepende siya sa value ng x, y, at c. Ngayon, anong hahanapin natin? Get the magnitude of 2a minus b at the point 213. And pangalawa, yung unit vector daw along a plus b. Okay, so unahin natin yung letter a. Ano daw ang magnitude ng vector na 2a minus b? So ito, multiply ko lang to ng 2 and then maminusan ko siya ng b. However, since vector b is uh, not a constant vector, we need to first evaluate this vector at the given point, 2, 1, 3. Kunin muna natin yung value ng vector b at the point, 2, 1, 3. Ayan. So itong vector b na ito, equal siya sa x squared. So ito 2, square ko lang. And then y, which is 1. And then ax plus x times z. So, that's 2 times 3 ay plus y z squared. So, the value of y is 1 and then z squared is 3 squared. So, 9 a z. Okay? So, let's simplify this. 2 squared is 4 times 1 is 4. So, we have 4 ax plus 6 ay plus 9 az. So, this is now vector b. At this point. So now let us get 2a minus b. 2a minus b equals. So multiply ko muna ito ng 2 lahat. 8ax minus 4ay plus 10az. Minus yung b. Na nakompute na natin. 4ax plus 6ay plus 9az. So now we can get. 2a minus b, which is equal to, so paano mag-subtract component by component, x to x, y to y, z to z. So, 8 minus 4 is 4, ax, negative 4 minus 6, that's negative 10, ay, and 10 minus 9, that's 1. So, we just write there, az. So, this is now your 2a minus b. Now, Ang sabi, ano daw yung magnitude niya? So, the absolute value of 2a minus b is equal to the square root of, pag ito in square ko, magiging 16 plus 100 plus 1. So, here I will get the square root of 170. Ito na ngayon yung absolute value ng 2a minus b. Ano ba ang numerical value ng square root of 117? That's a... Uh, 3 square root of 13 or 10.82. Ayan. Next, ano daw yung unit vector along A plus B at the same point? So, kung kukuha tayo ng unit vector, dapat alam muna natin yung vector na A plus B. ba? So, the vector A plus B is, so yung A natin is 4, negative 2, 5. Yung B naman natin is ito. So, dapat 4 plus 4 is 8. So, we have 8ax and then negative 2 plus 6. That's positive 4. Ay and 5 plus 9. That's 14. Az. So, this is your vector A plus B. Ang tanong dyan, ano daw yung unit vector along A plus B? So, we need to get its absolute value. The absolute value of A plus B is square root of 8 squared plus 4 squared plus 14 squared equals 16.61. Ayan. Okay, 16.61. Now, to get the unit vector, we just divide this vector by its absolute value. So, dito ko na isulat sa taas ha. A along A plus B. So, that's just this vector 8. AX plus 4 AY plus 14 AZ. All over yung sagot natin kanina na 2 square root of 69 or 16.61. Ayan. So, pwede na natin yung compute then isa-isa. Uh, 8 over 2 point square root of 69 and then 4 over 2 square root of 69 
Tapos, 14 over 2 square root of 69. So, pwede mong gawin yon sa calculator. Ayan. Okay? So, wala na akong space. Kaya, hindi ko na isusulat. Ikaw na lang yon <laughs> Ayan. So, madali lang naman yung vector. Medyo marami lang talagang uh, uh, dutdutin sa calculator. Kaya, kinakailangan ma-practice ka sa pagpindot ng mga digit sa calculator para hindi ka lagi nagkakamali. Okay? So, in the next episode, ang ituturo ko naman sa inyo is kung paano gawin ang multiplication ng dalawang vectors. So, vector multiplication yan. Okay? So, see you on my next video. Bye!